What is up guys? Tabs McCaffrey here from the Irving Goddess Shop. Today, I have two things in this video. First, we're gonna do a quick thrift trip. Can you see where I am? Yeah, <laughs> Value Village. Uh, I just got off work and I just wanna rip through here. I do work the next couple days. Who knows, you might find something and then it gives me a few things to list right away when I have a day off. And then also, I'm gonna go over the sales from the weekend, so make sure you stay tuned to the end. Okay. I can see people going in there. I got to get in there and see what we can find. Oh my gosh, these are my favorite things to do. I love doing these little thrift hauls with you guys. And today I'm on a mission. What the heck is that? I think I thought it was boho and then I was like, psych. Okay, I got to start thrifting some summer items. I'm going to start perusing the short sleeve section. And to be honest, I actually don't go through this section in winter. I don't move a lot of summer items. Mm, I shouldn't even say that because maybe if I actually listed summer items I would move them and I abandoned ship straight to athletic quick find nice lululemon top in excellent condition I really need to expand my knowledge in lululemon I had no idea what that was this one that was a cool shirt like the style and off to the jackets someone stopped me I need to stop looking at jackets winter is almost over and here I am sucker for jackets looking for patagonia north face puffers good quality uh, i like eddie bauer i saw this trucker one that hanger was driving me nuts men's i love oversized jean jackets but these were both like cheaper quality then i came across this beauty a shearling sheepskin coat in pretty good condition i really like the tone of it the price was right I didn't have a 20% off coupon with me and I feel like I probably would have taken a chance. When looking it over, I saw this button was also kind of hanging on by the last thread. I was like, I don't feel like sewing a button on. I'm not going to grab it. Big regrets. Should have grabbed it. <laughs> All right. These boots stood out. I don't know why. I just thought they looked really cool. I searched comps on them. They weren't that great. Still kind of cool boots. I like that vintage look. I found these Ms. Moose boots. I did do a comp search on these ones as well, feeling like I probably could have them listed or sold for $70 to $80, and they were in really good quality. They were a newer style, which I like. I'm not always a big fan of the buttons up the side. And then I grabbed these. I could tell they were good quality by the wooden heel and the feel of the suede, and I was just trying to figure out what brand it was. They were Uggs. Ah, the wood had a lot of scuffing, and that's what I'm checking over right now. I don't know. I left them. Maybe I should have grabbed them. Would you guys grab those? Oh, another pair of Sorrells. These were actually in my size and I was so pumped about them. I'm kind of checking them over. They seem to be in all right condition. I did throw them in the cart. Next pair are these Dexter boots. They're like those duck boots. They're a really good quality, unique. I probably should have searched comps. I didn't. I just put them down. I judged them by their sole. You'll notice I pick up shoes and check out the soles frequently. This is one way I usually tell between quality and not so much quality. And you can usually tell by the quality of the rubber. I just said quality a bunch of times. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. And these Bach boots, these ones haunted me from the last thrift trip. They were $8.99. Screw it. I'm throwing them in the cart. I'm going to take a chance on them. Next up, these are some bobs. They're kind of like those knockoff sketchers. I don't know if you remember them. They're asking $19 for those shoes. I don't know what resell is on them, but I can't imagine that I'm making much with them being listed at $19. I picked up these green pair. They really looked like bed stew or um, AS98, but the gold metal part was so cheap. You could just tell that it wasn't a quality boot. These ones, I thought they were, um, what are those, like Mukluk, Mintonka? I can't even remember what they're called, but they're really good quality. They just weren't a brand. Off to my next favorite section, which is sweater vests. I love sweater vests, grandpa style. I'm looking for wool content or cotton knit ones. Just found the one. Look at this beauty just hanging out. An L.L. Bean flannel shirt. Probably could have been worn as a shacket. It was quite large for a medium and really heavy material. I also found this really cool Nordic uh, sweater cardigan. I'm on the fence. I have a feeling it is shrunk 
and the wool feels a little bit felted, but I'm gonna throw it in my cart and check comps. Maybe it's worth trying to unshrink, but the felting, not sure. All right, let's go over what I found. Here's my thoughts. I checked the comps on this. They weren't that great. It wasn't as big of a profit margin as I was thinking I was gonna have. I thought about keeping it just for myself or Jeff, but decided to just put it back. This item, I didn't show this in the thrifting part, but it's a Tundra sweater. It reminds me of a Kuji, very similar style, Canadian made, very unique. I love this. I have a feeling it will probably do good on Etsy. I also found this L.L. Bean cotton knit cardigan sweater. It's in a beautiful neutral tone. I love these sweaters. I think it'll be good for selling in spring and it's a good size. It's like probably a women's large, men's medium. All right, we're, let's whip through these boots before I continue on with the clothes. These were Franco Sarto. They were leather. When I searched the comps on them, Value Village was asking about $24.99 for them. I also looked at these box again. I kind of did one more look over. There's quite a bit of wear on the stitching and the sole actually didn't have that much grip in them. I passed. I don't think I was going to get the high end on the comp that I was hoping for, which was like around $80. And then one more look at these because I'm probably going to keep them for myself. When I start looking at kind of that piping that goes around the toe, it was so damaged. And on both of them, I don't know. I think I'm going to pass on these ones too. And then in the bottom, we have those, uh, what, those Ms. Moose ones. Really cool. I like them. I like the wedge heel. I like that it doesn't have the buttons all the way up the front. I'm, like I said, I'm hoping to get $80 for them. Next up is this Lululemon tank top. I ended up passing on it. I couldn't find a stock photo. And then this long sleeve shirt. They were asking $23 for it. I didn't have a 20% off coupon and I know the profit margin wouldn't have been that big. This sweater vest that I grabbed earlier, I thought it was gonna be a good steal, but it was covered in food, which meant I would have to wash it. And it was acrylic, not wool. I'm really hoping for those wool items. And then this grandpa sweater. Again, I really love this piece, but the pilling was so bad. I don't think I could have depilled the whole thing. I scooped these North Face pants. They are quite expensive. They were like the windstopper, but the comps on them were only like, I think there was a pair listed for $50 and they were asking $10 for them. I also grabbed this Polaris vest. It's a vintage new with tags women's Polaris vest. I'm a sucker for snowmobile stuff just because we enjoy snowmobiling. I grab it, mm, might return it this week. I'm not sure. I didn't even check comps on it. I have to check comps on everything. Okay, looking at this item, what are your thoughts? It's not shrunk like in size, but it doesn't seem like it closes properly. In yeah, I'm just gonna not get it. I, yeah, I don't like the condition. I just left, got in the car, so I did get a couple pieces. Uh, that was a lot of looking and not a lot of fruit. I don't know if that was worth stopping today, but it is what it is. I put an honest effort, that's for sure. Uh, now I'm gonna get home, probably make some supper, and then let's go over the what solds from the weekend. I had a crazy weekend, lots and lots of bundles and sales to go out. I am back in my office. We got to ship out some sales. I just quickly did the math from Friday to Sunday. Okay, this is what blows my mind about selling online and reselling and e-commerce is that I can go and spend the weekend with my family, snowboarding, enjoying my time and still make money. Like, I, it just like blows my mind. I'm so disappointed that it took this many years for me to figure this out. But from Friday to Sunday, I sold 13 items and the total gross sales are approximately $570. We're gonna break down these sales. I'm gonna show you pictures and let you know what they sold for and what the item is. We're just gonna start pulling these items. I also turned on my ring light just to add some extra light because it is so dark in here. First item is an LL Bean jacket. I actually thrifted this one for myself and I wore it last year, but I found another one and I don't need any more. Now I just gotta find it. This system isn't the best in here. 
Hmm. Let's look one more time. Oh my gosh. It's not even in the closet. I have an awesome inventory system with SKU numbers and apparently I don't even use it. The next item to sell was a pair of Anthropology and Pilcro, kind of like patchwork jeans. I don't know how to describe them. I found these a couple months ago. I listed them pretty high, just hoping that they would sell a little bit higher. They sold for $40. I'll take it, not what I was hoping for, still making a profit. I'm just kind of getting good at accepting reasonable offers. Am I making money? Did I get my investment back? Do I have enough to pay my taxes? Okay, let's just call it a day. Next item is this Numitegs Charter Club Cashmere V-neck. This sold for $60. I thrifted that, I think like a long time ago. I don't even know, maybe fall. I thought it would sell definitely a lot quicker than it did. This next sweater is a Patagonia Better Sweater. It's a quarter zip pullover. And I didn't list it very long ago, so it's right in the front. There was some pilling on it. I cleaned it up really good with my sweater shaver. If you don't already own one, make sure you drop down in the description below. I have a link to the one that I use. I actually just purchased my second one because I think I lost the replacement blade. I've like sweater shaved so many garments so many garments with it so i was due for a new one next item is a disney mickey mouse top i'm pretty sure i got this one at the bins and i've had it forever happy to see that one go sold it for ten dollars and i have zero regrets on that i was gonna start pulling inventory to get it just kind of like those bottom maybe 50 items that are never selling things that i sourced you know, over a year ago, happy to see it go. And I don't have to, you know, pull and donate or try and bring it to a buy, sell, trade store. Next are a pair of Levi's Wedgie Icon Fit Raw Hem Jeans. These sold for $50. I also have a bundle. I'm gonna have to go out to the garage to grab these ones, but it's a Steve Madden uh, Midnight Ankle Leather Boot. I had these listed at $40 and a pair of Elliot Lucas Alessandro Peep Toe Leather Booties, I guess. And I had those listed at $50 as well. I have had these forever. I've had both of these shoes for a year. I would not grab them again if I was at a thrift store. She had liked both of them. I threw them in the bundle and I offered her $50 with discounted shipping because I just wanted to get these out of my inventory. Obviously like make a little money on them. She accepted it. I'm so happy to see those ones go. Next is a pair of Lululemon Wonder Train High Rise Crop in a 21 inch. These sold for $50. Should be right in front. Had another pair of Lulu sell. These are Lululemon Align Crop 19 inch black pants. In a size 10, they sold for $45. There we go. And one more pair of Lululemon In Movement 7 8 tights. And these sold for $72. I am definitely not a Lulu guru. I don't know the difference between all the materials. And sometimes I'm shocked at, I can have a pair that will be, you know, that I'll hold on to for a while. I tend to only pick up items that are 2018 and newer. So they have to have that size dot with kind of like the letters and the numbers around them. I will grab the odd one that doesn't have that new size dot as long as they're in excellent condition and they have to be like, I want them to be high rise. I don't think, I am not grabbing mid rise ones anymore unless they were like $2.99 or $3.99, which I never find at my thrift store. I try and just get current ones. But even with the current ones, like some sell for almost like full asking price at Lululemon and then some I can't get rid of for $50. I don't know. This next one is a cool piece. It sold for $65. I recently listed this and thrifted it maybe last week. I thought it was pretty cool. I paid like... I don't know, six bucks for it. It was somewhere between five and seven. I'm going to say six. It's just a really cool piece. I did toss it in the washing machine on delicate and then kind of let it air dry just to, you know, clean it up. I'm impressed with that. That is a two week turnaround jacket. Like that was some good pick in there. And the last piece to sell 
was this horse tapestry jacket. I've had this one for a little while as well. I thought it would have sold a lot quicker than it did. Sometimes you just gotta be patient with pieces and these tapestry ones, I tend to be pretty patient. I just have to find the right person for them. And I'll show you guys this one as well. Really gorgeous piece, has the horses on it. It is in a size extra large and the back's pretty cool. That wraps up the sales for the week. I think I'm also gonna touch a little bit on this new Poshmark Ambassador thing that came out the other day. I've seen so many posts on it. There's been lots of conversations. Here's my two cents on it. There are some requirements. If you sell a lot of items on Poshmark, you probably are already really close to those requirements. I think the one that might get people is maybe the sharing, the community shares. I'm gonna pop down the details in the description of what it is to become the ambassador too. But here's the good news. You do not need to be an ambassador or an ambassador level two to make money and sell items on Poshmark. Don't ever let someone convince you that you need that status. If you want that status, that's just you chasing it, which is totally cool. I don't know if I'm gonna go after it. The one thing that I really liked that I saw was the priority customer service. Not that I have to rely on them often, but sometimes it can be a little bit of a delay and kind of a pain in the butt. So I think that would be a perk to me. I also enjoy Posh Fest. I was a speaker last year. It was my second year attending Posh Fest and I was really impressed with the speakers this last year. So I feel like if they continue to add value and content year to year and growth and you know, just staying on top of trends and what we need to learn to grow our businesses, I could see value in that. I could see value in getting a discounted ticket or a free ticket to go. Truthfully, like I said, you don't need it to sell items and to make money on Poshmark. Don't get caught up in it, who cares? If you want to go for it, go for it. If not, don't sweat it. All right, I'm out of here. I got to pack up all these packages and get them off to the post office before they close. I think they close at like nine o'clock. I'm out. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. You guys are the best. I hope you have a wonderful week and many sales. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.